What is the difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation? Well, cyclic photophosphorylation is the normal situation. It's where plants make their ATP and their NADPH that is needed for photosynthesis. We start off with photosystem 2. Down here, we're going to have photosystem 1. We should also draw in the energy levels. We'll call this energy levels. We've got high energy level here, low down here. Light comes in at 680 nanometers and causes the electrons here to be excited to a higher energy level. These electrons are accepted by electron acceptor molecules and they're passed down a chain of energy carriers. As they're passed down the chain, the energy level drops. The energy levels as they drop are used to charge up ATP. Now at this point, light again hits slightly different wavelength. This time, the light is from 700 nanometers, causing our electrons to be re-excited. As our electrons are passed along the next chain of carriers, they are used to charge up NADPA. This is needed to make glucose during photosynthesis. So this summarizes the normal situation, non-cyclic photophosphorylation. We've got electrons be excited first, photosystem two, as they come down in energy levels charging up ATP, re-excited the same electrons at photosystem one and used to charge up NADPH. In fact, this is not quite true. The electrons themselves end up in the molecule of NADPH. So this is probably a much more accurate version. However, in order to make this, you need ADP. In order to make this, you need NADP+. After a very long day of sun, we get to a point where there is no more NADPH. At that point, we can't make more of this, but we've still got a lot of energy coming in from the sun. So the plants have devised a sneaky way to get some more energy. And we can compare it to cyclic photophosphorylation. Both copies at the moment show non-cyclic photophosphorylation, the normal situation. But sometimes we get into a situation where we don't have any NAD+. Without NAD+, we can't make NADPH. This pathway cannot occur, but there's still a lot of sunlight coming in. So what we find here is that the electrons that have been excited are fed back into the system here, fed through to create more ATP. So when there's an excess of light, we've used up all of this. Plants are sneaky. They're still making sure to maximize their returns by creating ATP. With ATP alone, plants can't do photosynthesis, but this is a temporary solution to utilize the light until more NAD plus comes alive. The first situation was called non-cyclic photophosphorylation, and the second is called cyclic photophosphorylation. Now, the big thing to remember is that this is the normal situation, and this is temporary only when there is excess light no more NADP+. We can actually couple what's happening during photophosphorylation with what's going on in the thylakoid membrane. Now you see the thylakoid, the space where hydrogen ions are all put together, the repulsion through ATP synthase. Now what we can do is remove the label so it fits better. What we've got here is photosystem 2. Our 680 nanometer light hits, excites our electrons, they get excited. We talk about them being grabbed by electron acceptors and being passed along a complex of proteins, which are these proteins here. As it's passed down, they push our hydrogen ions into the space, which repel through our ATP synthase to make ATP. Here is the production of ATP. We get to photosystem one. This point here doesn't quite line up. The electrons are re-excited by light at a different wavelength. If we've got NADPH, we'll get the creation of NADPH. You need that to make this, and we would get non-cyclic. However, if there's a shortage of this, our electrons are re-excited, feed back into this pathway, pushing in more hydrogen ions to create more ATP. So this diagram here is really a schematic of energy levels and molecule creation along the thylakoid membrane.